301-230-0980 is the phone number where you can call in and talk about what I just said or and what you heard about the commanders hosting multiple quarterbacks yesterday. If you're just, just tuning in, uh, my ultimate takeaway is this is a great thing. You learn about who these young men are as people. You get to watch them. Uh, in a more natural environment, surrounded by their peers. You get to see who emerges as a leader. You get to see who's standoffish and just kind of off to the side, who you want to be the leader uh, of your franchise. And while it doesn't override the tape and it doesn't override all the other parts of your evaluation, it does give you a different sense than just relying on what other people are telling you. Uh, Let's go to Keith in Clinton to get get us started. Keith, thanks for calling. You are on The Hoffman Show. Hey Hoffman, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. Appreciate your call. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm I, I, I love the idea of having everybody together. I actually did that when I interviewed people that were trying to get this one job at headquarters, and I brought three, the last three finalists in at the same time, just because I wanted to throw them off and get out of a habit. I figured somebody's conversation would throw somebody else's prepared conversation off. It worked very well. Now, as far as this is concerned, bringing everybody in like they did, you know, we are sitting back complaining we want somebody to come in and do something different we don't want to be in the same situation we're in every year and and when we finally get somebody that's coming in here doing something different because they're not used to it and i'm including the media too i mean the media has to start up some stuff anyway because they want people to read their writing so they got to always try to stir up something but the fans y'all out there be i itching about everything <laughs> little, little thing and then we get something different you're still doing it you're not gonna be happy and if this thing turns out to where we end up going to the championship, the NFC championship game, everybody's going to be cool with everything. Why don't you just sit back, shut up. You got something different going on. I know my mother told me, stop saying shut up. You got something different that we're trying to do. Sit back and see if it works. Stop falling in line with the media, with the media rights about something negative about what they're doing and try to back them up. They're giving us something different. They seem like they're serious. I'm, I'm open for whatever they're going to try to do. Jesus. <laughs> Keith, I'm glad we uh, we get that off your chest. I will say this about media, though, real quick, not to get defensive of of media, because it was funny. We uh we had Charles Davis on uh, on Take Command, amazing conversation today, and Charles did this too, where he's mm-hmm. like the media, and he's like, look, I'm in the media, I get it, and so we can't. I'm not I'm not trying to pull myself out. I do think sometimes media and social media in modern times gets pushed together, and so you do have a lot of like people that are tweeting a lot and. Uh, also reporters, and sometimes they're saying different things, and that gets mushed together in one big media conglomerate. I think a lot of fans, to your point, though, I think a lot of fans were driving this narrative. I did see some media members for sure, and obviously Florio was kind of the big one, and I just, I don't know, man. It's, it is, it does feel like there's a lot of people that are looking for something to to hack out with the commanders and want it to right. be the same old thing when it's very so clearly not. Right. I'm just saying, look, this... Just, just stop with the nonsense, man. It's a headache. They're making the show seem like, you know what? I'm tired of hearing the same nonsense. Can we just go positive and try to back them up? I'm for. I want um, Jaden, but if they don't choose him, they know more than I know. So I'm going to sit back. I'm going to relax, and I'm going to see what they have to say. I don't want to look like a fool. And when everything comes together, we like, man, they knew what they were doing, and I wasted all that energy being there. <laughs> So, you know, man. But anyway, yeah. thank you for your time, man. Yeah, I appreciate Keith, it. I love uh, the show. It's a great call. I really appreciate it. Um, and Keith has something there that uh, most people, I would say, in and outside of the league that enter these spaces lack, which is humility. The humility to go, I do not know as much as other people. And even, I think most importantly, we talked about this a couple of times this week, the humility to, if you are in the league, if you are Adam Peters, and you know more than anybody, hopefully at this point, theoretically, about these guys. You are the ultimate decision maker. You are very skilled at that. To have the humility still to go, I'm not sure. Here's my best guess. And that because the clock is ticking. We're now a week away. But the way you operate when you have the humility to go, I don't know. Like, I'm, I, I don't <sighs> The last podcast I listened to on the way into work today included one of the best, like, pro Drake May arguments I've heard. And it's from a guy that I've listened to and a guy that I've referenced a lot in Nate Tice. But Nate just did a really, really good job of articulating why he's so high on Drake. And I walked away from it and I was like, huh, 
I kind of gotten off of May and fallen uh, back into to leaning towards Daniels. But was that a mistake? And I know, like, my gut tells me McCarthy's the best of the three. Truly. Like, when I watch the three of them, and I, and I put down the clicker, uh, I, I put down my remote, I got the best feelings after I watched J.J. McCarthy. I can explain to you why. I'm not going to sit here and do it now because we've done that bit uh, a billion times. But I also know that I'm missing a ton of information. And I think that that is the thing where I, I can get to a point where I can say, hey, I'm at least comfortable enough with all three that if they take any of them, I trust that they, the pieces that I'm missing that might me, lead me to slightly favor one over the other uh, are favoring the guy that they took. But that's the thing is that's why you gather all this info, gather all this intel, and why you have something like what happened yesterday where you get these guys together and you try to understand who they are. Because if you understand, I love this line from Dane Brugler that he talks about when he puts together all the biographical information for the Beast, their, their big draft guide at The Athletic. If you understand where someone came from, it helps you understand where they're going to go. And this is a data point that can help you understand where someone comes from, how to treat them, and, and what's important to them. Uh, let's go to Kurt in District Hikes. Kurt, uh, keep things rolling here for us on the Hoffman Show. How you doing, Craig? I'm good, bro. It's been a couple weeks since I called. I hope I still have my table in the room. Oh, uh, we got you. We got you. We just okay. pulled up pulled up a chair, uh, bro. So I, we're here we are. <laughs> I like the way you broke it down. Uh I mean you broke it down beautifully, uh, the reason why they, you know, would have these guys all in at the same time and going to top golf and all that. And I, I really hope that like national pundits like Chris Sims and all these other guys is out here being so critical of what they're doing could hear what you have to say about it because once I heard what you said about it, it makes perfect sense what they did, okay? And uh, I don't see a problem with it at all. And I think I think basically from national media to local media to fans and just about everybody, it's been a waiting game for this draft and they're just talking about it so much. Now they want to find every little thing to nitpick and criticize, you know, as far as trying to, you know, what they're doing and why they're doing it, and also evaluating those three players. You know, it's it's like, it's almost like so magnified, just keep doing it repetitively, then you keep coming up with new stuff here and there. So I just think, at the end of the day, I think Peters knows what he wants, and I think he really won't decide on who he's going to pick until draft night when he hears everybody's final offer in terms of whether he moves off of that pick or not, if he doesn't move off of that pick, I think he knows what he wants to do. Well, that's, that's just a, my feeling. Yeah, on. no, Kurt, appreciate the call as always. A, an, another good one. Your your seat is safe. Um, I, I think that when you – like Adam talked today, and we're going to play some bites for you uh, as we go here, uh, play a bunch of them later on in the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, we might hit one or two over the next half hour uh, in between some of the calls here. But w- Peter said today, like, I'm pretty happy at two, and – I, it's hard for me to imagine us trading the pick, which is code for, yo, if someone really wants it, like whatever y'all have offered so far ain't remotely close to good enough. Now, he also has no incentive to tell the truth there. He could ha- he could be like, man, Vegas is so desperate for Jaden Daniels. They've offered me three first, and I think if I just go out here and be pretend like I'm not interested, play hard to get, they might be dumb enough to go try to find a fourth first rounder or something crazy, right? Like, who knows? Like, his incentives here are to to use the media and not necessarily the media in terms of like the people. He's not trying to use John Keim or Nikki Javala or Sam Fortier. It's trying to use the platform, the the public nature of a press conference to manipulate the market to his advantage. Um, he also might just be telling the truth and is genuinely happy. And I think you're right uh, that he, he has to know who is it the favorite right now, but there are things that they're still flushing out and he verbatim said today I guess paraphrase said today there's no rush we have a week we'll probably know who we we want by early next week so there's that 301-230-0980 301-230-0980 that is the phone number for you to call in and talk about 
this story where the commanders have welcomed in multiple quarterbacks on their 30 visits yesterday, and it has sent a certain uh, part of the media into a tizzy, for a certain part of the fan base into a tizzy. And I do want to follow up on the media side of this, actually, because I have, I have some thoughts about what drives certain people in the media. Uh, and I think it's a larger discussion that absolutely fits uh, very snugly around this one. We'll discuss that and take more of your calls next. Taking your calls on whether or not the commanders made a mistake of some kind, uh, bringing in multiple quarterbacks for their 30 visits all at once. Apparently took them to Top Golf, uh, had them in the building, uh, did some of the meetings together. I think it's a great move. I think it's a chance to see how they interact, see who steps up as a leader, see who handles that well, see who feels threatened. I don't want someone who feels threatened. I want someone who's confident. Uh, and it goes to the point, uh, Rick uh, is commenting on the YouTube stream. Oh, the pundits are laughing at them. Who cares? The thing about being confident, like th- there's a difference between confidence and bravado. Confidence is, I really don't care what you think of me. Bravado is, I don't care what you think of me. Like, one is fake. One is real. And the thing is, bravado means if I wind up being right in the end, I'm going to laugh back at you and be like, ha, 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 you idiots didn't know what you're talking about anyway. And confidence is I still don't care what they think. I'm not going to laugh at them because they literally didn't care in the first place. I'm going to do what I think is right because it's right. That's confidence. That is real, like, cojones. That is real gangster stuff. And that's the way Adam Peters is operating. He doesn't care what Mike Florio says. You know who did care? Everyone else who held that job the last bunch of years. Like 30. You want to be good? Don't care. Do what's right. Don't worry about the politics. Worry about the policy, if you will. 301-230-0980. Let's go to Ramallah. Ramallah, you're on the Hoffman Show. Oh, yes. How you doing? I'm good. Oh, yeah. So um, I did kind of think it was a mistake because I remember listening to Jaden Daniels and he was saying that, um, you know, he just wanted a team to believe in him. And and that's for any, uh, you know, any quarterback, you know, that you have coming, you know, you owe them just as much respect as you're looking for. And, uh, you know, just show them that you, you know, have enough respect for them to really give them a chance to interview them. Um, I mean, you know, I really think that Jaden... Go ahead. Oh, so I think that's an interesting point. Like that is the most compelling um, argument that I've heard of why this could possibly be a mistake. I still don't think it is, but I think that's compelling. The idea of believing in someone and just being like, you're our guy. But I also think that would assume that they've made up their mind and they might not. And I think you can also eventually, once you draft him, you just like, Hey man, like we just had to, we had to, you had to interview before you got the job. You got the job. Now let's let's roll. And and if someone uh, I, if someone is is needing like to be I don't want to say baby because that's too strong and like that is is infantilizing the the process. But like if someone needs that, I don't know that they're gonna have the 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 mental fortitude to play quarterback in the NFL. Like playing quarterback in the NFL is hard. And if you can't survive the interview process, that does tell me something about you. True, true, um, but. In my opinion, I think Jaden Daniels is the clear cut number two, if not the number one. Um, I mean, if you just look at what, you know his trajectory is what he's done in the last five years. Um, he's you know he's a he's a four point grade um, you know four point eight student. He yeah, but I mean, years. I don't I don't disagree that there's a lot to like there. Um, I mean, for saying five years, like he didn't throw for twenty touchdowns in his first four, but he was incredible in his fifth. He is a four zero student. Like his leadership skills are off the chart. There's a lot. He's accurate. Like there's a lot to like. But there's also people that would tell you the same thing about Drake May and J.J. McCarthy. And there's even some people that would tell you that about Michael Penix, that are like, he's just as good. And so the, I, like, what we have to do, I think, when evaluating the process is take our own evaluations out of it. I think that's the only way to do this fairly. Ramal, it's a great call. I appreciate it. Uh, I think you, you brought up an interesting point there. Um, I, what, one thing that I will say, though, is when it comes to like uh, – Florio or Chris Sims or some of these other guys that are criticizing this. And I I would say a lot of those guys wind up criticizing a lot of things. It just goes to a point that I I was talking after uh, we, we had Tom Habershow on last week, peel back the curtain. Tom and I taped earlier in the day. 
Um, we didn't, we didn't, Tom wasn't with us live, but the, the NBA writer, um, who wrote about some of the refereeing, uh, changes that had happened. And I've known Tom for a decade. And so we were catching up after we got done taping and we were talking about the state of journalism, like big grandiose discussion. And there's a word that, that we came back to as we were talking about, um, like he had just been on an episode of Pablo Torre finds out and Pablo's doing this incredible podcast where he somehow is doing like deep dive journalism on a weekly basis. It's nuts what he's able to produce. But it, it all stems from a place of curiosity. And to me, like, that's, if you want to know who the people that I like that do these kinds of jobs, it's the people who reach for curiosity over criticism. It's easy to sit back and just lob bombs at every decision anyone makes that's not with the consensus. Or even is, oh, there's just a bunch of sheep following all the people. Or like, ah, everybody knows you should do the other thing. Like, that's lazy and it's easy. And guess what? It works. It works. I don't know why, but it works. It works being a relative term, too. It gets those people noticed. And in the attention economy, attention's good for your own personal economy. A lot of those people wind up rising the ranks in this business and getting paid a lot of money. And it's just not that hard. Being curious is hard. Searching for actual information is hard. Being willing to put your own gut instinct of that's dumb to the side and instead go, why would they do that? And having the fortitude to and the the curiosity and the ability to go find an answer, whether it's by reading something, whether it's by making a phone call, like that's that to me is way not just more interesting and quote unquote better, but like, it's actually more entertaining. Like why, if all you're going to do is just sit back and lob bombs at people, like you don't need a platform to do that outside of Twitter. Just quote, tweet a bunch of stuff with like, this is dumb. No thoughts that no, nothing extra. Just, just be a critic. And in the sense that you're providing criticism at all times, but I prefer when critic is short for critical, as in there's actual critical thinking. And that stems from curiosity. Are you willing to challenge the things that you believe when presented with a new idea? And I just think a lot of people aren't. They'd rather live in their comfort zone. And I think especially that's true in the media space because there's no real penalty for being wrong. If all you ever do is go with the crowd, when you're wrong, the crowd's wrong, it's zero risk. You're not even putting yourself out there. It's part of the reason it's lazy. You get to look bold with zero risk. And so, yeah, if you're Mike Florio today, you just bomb Adam Peters because you haven't heard of people doing this or you know some person that you were talking to thought it was dumb and it was mad, or maybe you genuinely think it's, it's a bad idea. But did you ever take a second to consider that it could be a good one? That would be my question. Curiosity. It did more than kill the cat. Uh, let's go to uh, Noel. Noel, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Hey, Craig. How's it going? Thanks Good, for taking my call yet again. Um, I mean, look, I agree with you, and I agree that for this process, I mean, they have to do everything every little single thing to make sure that they make the right decision and bringing all the guys in, just seeing how competitive they are, not only just on the field, but off the field, I think is extremely valuable. And I think a lot of the pundits out there, and again, like maybe there's a part of me that believes it too, that the pick is going to be Jaden Daniels. This front office doesn't have to go by with what everybody and all the pundits and what all of the general consensus is amongst the media members. They can do whatever they want as far as their process and getting this correct and getting it right. Because the goal is to win a Super Bowl. Like that's what that's what the goal is for oh, every right. team and it starts with the quarterback. So do what you have to do, put in the extra work. You don't have to make a decision one week before the draft. You know, like just put in the extra work and do what you need to do. And it's totally fine with me. And if there's one little thing where like, let's say like Monday or Tuesday of next week, like before, like days before they, before the draft, 
they find out something that's really important and then they all pivot, change their minds and the consensus change, that's fine. It's totally fine with me. So I'm totally I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you and yeah, look, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with changing what you initially thought was your decision, but then something happened to then shift it. That, that's that's doing your due diligence. It's totally fine. One hundred percent. No, yeah. no, we're, your your phone's uh, eating it here at the end of the call. But I appreciate I appreciate your call as always. Uh, always smart. Always thoughtful. Um, and in this case, uh, happens to agree. But I, I think that to to that point, as you go through the draft process. There's a very long list of questions you're trying to answer. And I think where some people get twisted is you can't answer them all when the season's over. Because some people are like, they haven't played a game in months. How could you possibly change? Well, yeah, the film hasn't changed. Now you might get new eyes on the film and the, those new eyes, your coaches might see something different, uh, better or worse that changes your film grade uh, even after all the games have been played because someone with a different set of eyes and a different skill set and a different perspective watches it and likes or doesn't like something that they see. But when it comes to figuring out who the person is, how they work, what's important to them, do they love football, you can get those answers in part during the season and your scouts are there and have relationships and are talking to coaches. But coaches are going to gas up their guys for the most part unless they know a guy's going to suck in the league and they're like, that guy does not have it because they want to save their own reputations. So they might be like, yeah, you got to be really careful with that guy. We've had issues with him, or I don't think once he gets to the pros, he's going to be able to handle the money or whatever coaches say to save their their bacon, not just gas up all their guys. But for the most part, they're going to gas up their guys because the best thing they can do is get guys drafted to help them in recruiting. But if you get a situation where you can verify information about who they are independently and experience who they are for yourself, why wouldn't you do that? That's exactly what the commanders did yesterday. We'll wrap up the hour with a few more calls next. 301-230-0980. 301-230-0980. It's Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and always live on the free Odyssey app. Let's go back to the phones to wrap up the hour. 301-230-0980. Talking about whether or not the commanders made a mistake in bringing in multiple quarterbacks uh, to be together and get interviewed together. Uh, I think there were some individual portions. Uh, potentially including meetings with Josh Harris. Um, but there was definitely a lot of a group dynamic uh, that they had yesterday in Ashburn. Let's go to Al. Al, thanks for calling. You're on the Hoffman Show. Hey, what's up, Craig? How you doing, man? I'm great, Al. Appreciate you calling and uh, and holding through the commercial break there. Uh, no problem, no problem, man. Hey, I'll, I'll say this. This is one of the greatest things the commanders could have done is to bring that group in together and do it just like that. One thing people fail to remember and realize is that when you have a group of alpha males or alpha people together, you're going to see who's the real alpha in the group yes. after a while. You're going to see who the real leader is. And in that instance, I call them the Omega Alpha, the, the last alpha. That's the last one standing. And he's that guy. In this instance, you got all of these personalities, these different things. It's great. Yeah, go out, bow. Those things, competitive nature kicks in. Who's the competitor? Who wants to win? Who has that drive to win in something as simple as golf? Right. That's what I'm looking for. And the military does it too. They put the guys together and say, we're going to see who the leader is. Who, totally. We're going to find out who the leader is in a group of stuff. And to me, in, in like a pack of wolves, the same thing. All of them are wolves. All of them do their thing. <laughs> but at right. some point, there's going to be that one wolf that says, I'm in charge here. Right. <laughs> totally. And it doesn't have to be in like a – alpha male kind of way like because there's some people that will fake that or will try to do that and it's going to come off as corny or disingenuous or whatever and there's going to be someone that emerges in a genuine way and that's the exactly. one that you want and like we were talking about earlier Al, i don't know if you were tuned in for this part of the show i don't care whether you're actually good at golf or not i care whether you're willing to compete i care whether you're willing to be like i suck at golf but let's go like whatever let's do it like drake may is probably the best golfer of the bunch drake may is a sick athlete who's good at everything but is Jaden Daniels willing to swing a club and even maybe laugh at himself, but it shows like a vulnerability that you need as a leader? Like, I care about that. That is alpha in the way that you need in the modern NFL. Exactly. And that's the whole point of bringing a group of guys together, whether it be quarterbacks, tight ends, old linemen, whatever. Let 
two be together. You're going to start seeing people's personalities come out, and you're going to start seeing competitive nature, especially in a game setting, golf, playing bowling, you know, pool, darts, anything. It's like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan competed at everything. Everything. Oh, golf, yeah. Everything. As long as it was a sport and, he, and you could win, he wanted to win. No, Michael Jordan is a competition <laughs> addict. Like, I don't think, like, the level that Michael Jordan is competitive helped him be who he was as a basketball player and is terrible for Michael Jordan as a human being. Like, he's, exactly. he's a literal addict when it comes to competition, um, which I know I say with a chuckle, but, like, I actually mean that in a way that is there's a little bit of concern for Michael Jordan as he continues to get older and, you know, goes golfing and does all the things that he does. But he's got enough money that doesn't actually matter. Point is, like, I, but as a general manager of a football team, I want that guy who's going to lead my football team for sure. Al, it's a great call. Thanks so much, man. Uh, let's wrap up the calls with Kevin. Uh, Kevin, thanks for holding. You are on the Hoffman Show. Thanks for having me. This is going to go against the grain and sound Pollyannish, but why does everything have to be so self-interested and self-calculating? Well, you know, Washington needs to sell its organization, too, to these guys. They want – Whoever they pick, they want them to come in and be excited to work for the organization. And what the what it sends to them is like, we consider you human beings. Just relax. Have a good time. You're not commodities. The NFL has this image. It's all about billions of dollars and what these guys can do for our bottom line. And bring them in. Let them have a good time. Enjoy each other. They're going through a tough time. I mean, it's a nervous time. It improves Washington's image, I think. Uh, in the eyes of the players, in the eyes of the public, because it's like not everything's about what I'm getting from you. Here's our organization, what we're about, and what our locker room will be about. And that, that's where the benefit is, in my opinion, for, the, for Washington, for the commanders. Not like which guy is the alpha male. It's more about what kind of organization is Washington and what are they willing to do to make you comfortable to play for the commanders. That, that's what strikes me is what the benefit is and i don't understand all the criticism of it you yeah. know i don't either outside of people life. people are not curious and they just think that the way that they heard things done once or the things they think the way that it they think it is is the way it should be done kevin i think it's a really interesting point and a phenomenal call appreciate it glad we got to you uh here before the end of the hour because ultimately like imagine this ant let's say in three four years from now all these guys are at something. I don't know what kind of draft class reunions they have, but like they're at the, you got a couple of them that wind up working out and they're at the pro bowl um, or they're at, and they're here's probably the best, uh, best chance. They're at the super bowl, right? Uh, they're, they're Hawking product. Uh, maybe, maybe whoever's at Washington, hopefully is coming off like a loss in the NFC championship game, but they're out there. Um, the other two guys are out there and, one of them's out there with the bounty paper towels and has got that fancy green jacket that all those guys got this year. And someone else is out there with state farm selling insurance, whatever on radio row. And they, they get a chance to like catch up and like, Hey, remember when we went on that visit to Washington and they probably look at the one who got drafted by Washington and they're like, damn, I wish I was you not because Washington was second, but because of the kind of organization that they're trying to build here. And I think that's a good point because I think to Ramallah's point earlier, the caller who called in earlier and was like, you know, Jaden Daniels is a guy that just wants someone to believe in him. Okay, like that's fine. You can interview other people and then ultimately decide that you're the guy that we like and we believe in you and we're ready to make that investment. We just had to go through the process because these other, it's not that we don't believe in you. It's that he could be worth believing in too. It's not, a, it's, there, you can't have a scarcity mindset. And so ultimately, like, what kind of taste do you leave in the player's mouths? And I do think that is a test. I think that if there's a player that goes through playing top golf with some of their draft classmates at the end of a long process, this is, yesterday was the last day they could do 30 visits. These guys finally get a couple of days, hopefully, to chill, relax, and then they ultimately head to Detroit for the draft or wherever it is that they're going to spend draft day. And Washington kind of gave, like, yeah, they're stressful. You meet with the owner. I'm sure there were football meetings and stuff. But ultimately, like, they get to play top golf. Like, that's pretty sweet. Like, that's a good experience that Washington gave them. And I really, the more I think about it, like that point of, like, if you're Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, or Jaden Daniels, not just as a competitor, but as a person, not as a commodity, but as a human, 
and you leave Dulles Airport yesterday and head home, you're hoping that you get on next time you're there, it's on Josh Harris's plane as as a member of the commanders. Like I've no doubt in my mind. And if you leave without that, then like I don't think you're the right person to play for Adam Peters and Dan Quinn. And in some ways it is kind of that simple. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.